Hi, my name is Jay with Kick Foosball Tables. First off, I'd like to welcome you to the Kick family. Today I'll be showing you how to properly assemble your Kick Royalton Foosball Table. Now I know sometimes it's going to be a bit challenging, but hopefully this instructional video will help simplify that process. After sorting out all the parts in the box and once you've matched each part to what's inside your instruction manual, if you've noticed any damage or missing parts or if there's any issue at all, please contact customer support with the pictures of the shipping label, the box label, the box itself, and the damaged part. Our contact information will be listed at the end of this video. For this assembly, you will need an Allen wrench that has already been supplied for you, and also a Phillips head screwdriver. However, I will be using my power drill fitted with the Phillips head tip to help speed along this process. Now for this first step, we will be attaching our end panel brackets P21 to both of our end panels P2C and end panel P2B and we'll be attaching using our H4 screws. When attaching your bracket P21 to the end panel P2B, you want to make sure that you attach your brackets to the inside of the end panel and that the goalie hole is faced down. You also notice that there are two markings here on both sides of the end panel. You simply just want to go ahead and line up your bracket to the middle of the marking, making sure that the bracket is flush with the top of the end panel. You also notice that these holes are not pre-drilled, so you will need to apply some pressure when screwing in your screws. Okay. Once you've attached both your end panel brackets to both end panels P2B and P2C, we can move on to the next step. Now for step two of this assembly, we will be attaching our end panel P2B to both of our side panels P1 using our H3 screws. Now you just want to make sure that when you attach your side panel that for one, that the ball entry hole is closer to the floor and that you are attaching to the inside of the side panel. You want to make sure when you are attaching your end panel to your side panel that for one, that the wood grain is faced inward and that your um, in panel brackets are faced closest to the floor. Now you just want to align the in panel to the inside of the side panel. Okay, once you've attached your end panel to both of the side panels, go ahead and repeat this step to the other side. For step three, we will be attaching our end panels P2A to both of the side panels uh, P1 using our H4 screws. Now when attaching your end panel P2A to your side panels and the end panel uh, P2B, you want to make sure that the wood grain is face down. Then you want to go ahead and slide your end panel underneath. Making sure it's flush with the inside of end panel B.
All right, once you've attached your end panel A to end panel B and the side panels, go ahead and repeat this step to the other side. After you've attached both your end panels to your side panels, we can go on to step four in attaching our play field P3 to the assembly. Now you just want to make sure that the graphics are face down. Before attaching our playing field to the assembly, you want to make sure that all four corners line up evenly to the assembly. You also notice that all the holes of the playing field have been pre-drilled. We will be using our H3 screws to secure our playing field. Next, we'll be attaching our support braces to the bottom of our playing field using our brackets P20 and screws H4. The first thing you want to do though is go ahead and line up each bracket to each end of your brace. There are a total of three braces. I just want to make sure that the, that the bracket is flush to the end of your brace and that you are mounting it to the larger side um, of the brace. We'll be using our H4 screws to attach our bracket. After you've attached all of your brackets to all three of your support braces, we will now be attaching our support brace to the bottom of our playing field and our side panel. This first brace you just want to go ahead and line up to the center of the playing field and the other two you want to go ahead and space about a foot apart. be using our H4 screws to attach these braces as well. These holes are not pre-drilled, so you will need to apply some pressure when screwing in your screw. All right, once you've attached all three of your support braces to the bottom of your playing field, we will now be um, attaching our support bracket, P6, to the uh, bottom of the playing field and side panel. Again, we'll be using our H4 screws. After you've attached all four of your brackets to both the playing field and side panel, we can go on to the next step, step five, and attaching our end panels P2C and securing them using our four chrome corners P17 and our H4 screws. You want to make sure that for one, the wood grain is faced out and that these bottom brackets are faced closer to the floor. You also notice that there are grooves on both sides of the side panel and grooves on both sides of the end panel.
simply just want to go ahead and line up your chrome corner, making sure that this single hole is faced in closest to um, the side panel. So you want to go ahead and line up this, this chrome corner piece uh, to those grooves and then simply just go ahead and slide them down. Next, you want to insert your H4 screw into the hole of your chrome corner piece and into the side panel. Next, we'll be uh, securing our end panel and brackets to the bottom of end panel P2A using our H4 screws. Okay, once you have finished attaching your end panel, go ahead and repeat all of step five to the other side of the end panel. After you've attached both of your end panels, P2, C, we go on to the next step, step six, and attaching our legs, P4A and P4B, and securing them using bolts H1 and our H2 washers. Now you would have also noticed that stored inside these legs are the ball runners and the two uh, crossbars. Now you simply just want to go ahead and uh, remove them before um, we attach our legs. Before attaching your legs you would notice that there are four holes, four, uh, two holes on the end panel and two holes um, on your side panel. There are also four holes on your leg. Two holes on this side and two holes on this side. Now you simply just want to go ahead and line up the corner of your leg to the corner of the end panel and side panel and just line up those holes. You also want to make sure that the hole for your crossbar is faced inward to the other leg. You want to make sure when screwing in your screws that you do not tighten them at all at this time and I will explain in the next frame uh, the reason for that. After you've attached all four of your legs, we can go to the next step in inserting our crossbar. Now, the reason why we did not fully tighten all of our bolts is so that we have some wiggle room uh, when inserting the crossbar. Then once your crossbar is in place, you can go ahead and tighten all of your bolts. After you've inserted both of your crossbars and secured your legs to your table, we can go to the next step, step seven, and inserting our goalie hole, uh, P12, over the inside of the end panel. We'll be attaching our goal hole using our H4 screws. Now you just want to make sure that you align your goal hole over the hole on the inside of end panel P2B and secure it to the back of end panel P2C.
Next, we will be attaching our ball catcher P11 over the hole on the side panel using our H4 screws. Now you'll notice that these holes are already uh, marked. So you just want to go ahead and line up your ball catcher over those holes. You also want to make sure to position the ball catcher lower than the goal box so that gravity can work its magic and to make sure that the ball return system works efficiently. Okay, after you've secured your ball catcher, we can now insert our ball runner P13 between uh, both the ball catcher and your goalie hole. After you've attached your goals and your ball catchers to both sides of the table, we go on to the next step, step eight, and attaching our leg leveler, P10, to the bottom of our leg. Now this part's pretty simple. You just want to screw down your leg leveler all the way down to the base of your leg. Now the purpose of these leg levelers is to even out your playing field during play, so that if one side's higher than the other, you just go ahead and unscrew a couple of notches to even out your playing field. You also notice that there's a rubber ring on the bottom of each leg leveler. This is to prevent your table from sliding during play. Alright, after you attach all four of your leg levelers to the bottom base of your legs, we're going to the next step in turning over our table. Now, this is a two person job, so you will need some assistance for this part of the assembly. You want to make sure when turning over your table that you don't rest the weight of the table on either of the legs. So you just want to make sure that you turn the table over in one swift full motion, that the legs don't hit the ground, and that they all land at the same time. After you've had some assistance turning over your table, we can now go on to the next step, step 9, and attaching our ball entry cups P9A and ball entry sockets P9B into the side panel using our H5 screws. And I simply just want to make sure that you screw in your ball entry cup into your socket first, before inserting it into your side hole, the side panel. Just want to go ahead and line up your hole, making sure that it's level to the top of your table. And insert your screw. And secure. If you are looking for a one-man goalie setup, instead of having the other two outer men on the goalie rod, you will replace them with the four black stop rings. Next, place the four green triangle corner ramps you received on each corner of the playing field. If you had already applied the field lighting tape, you can place the ramps on top of it if you ever want to switch back. But if this is your style of play, then either cut the lighting tape accordingly so that it doesn't go under the ramps, or don't install the lighting tape at all. Finally. Screw the ramps in using four screws and cover the hole using the four plugs. After you've attached both of your ball entry cups to both sides of the table, we now move to the next step, step 10, and inserting our player rods. The most important part of assembling your kick, roll, and football table is making sure that all your rods are in the right place. You want to carefully review your diagram and instruction manual prior to inserting your rods. To ensure you install these rods properly on the table, the easy way to go about this is to go ahead and lay out all your rods out on the table first. What you want to make sure is that you match up the holes on each rod with what's inside the instruction manual so that you know the equal amount of players for holes in the rods is correct. You also want to make sure that there's a hole on the correct side of the table where the handles are going to later go. Now before I insert our player rods and attach our players, I'm going to go ahead and show you a preview of an already assembled table and explain the differences between counterbalance men versus uniform men and the difference between a one-man goalie versus a three-man goalie setup. Counterbalance men versus uniform men. With your table, you will receive two full sets of different style of foosball men. One set of uniform hard plastic men, and one set of ABS counterbalance men. 
The uniform men or the foosball men used mostly by beginners. If you keep your players in your rods horizontal, they will fall back down to a vertical position. If you keep spinning the rods, they will just continue on spinning. Whereas the more experienced or regular players prefer the counterbalance men. Counterbalance players mean that there is a weight in the head equal to the weight of the toe. So unlike the uniform men, they will not fall back down to a vertical position if left horizontal or in any other position. They also don't keep spinning like the other uniform men. This lets a user position the foosball table men to their liking or technique. Again, it's totally up to the player. When inserting your players to your player rod, you want to note that there is a bumper, a washer, you want to slide on all three of your men, or however many men you're adding to your uh, player rod. Then add another washer and another bumper. You want to complete by sliding in to the second hole. Now the easiest way to attach your player to the rod is to go ahead and line up the back of the player to the hole in the rod. Then insert your C7 nut into the back of the player. Hold your thumb over the hole. Turn the player around. You want to insert your C6 bolt into the chest of the player. Keeping the back of the bolt in place. And then tighten. Now go ahead and repeat this step to the other players. After you've inserted your rods and attached the correct amount of players per holes in the rod, we now move on to the next step, step 11, attaching our handles P7 onto the ends of our rods. We'll be using our H7 screws to secure our handles. And you just want to go ahead and line up the hole of the handle to the hole of the rod. Insert your screw and then tighten. One quick note, these handles are really high quality. Most of the other companies have their really cheap rubber slide on handles. Also, these rods are semi hollow. So they are durable enough to rough play, yet light enough to let other players have full control of the rod. Also, if you need any rod lubricant, please contact Kick and we'll send you a free complimentary bottle. Okay, after you've attached all of your handles to your rods, you now move on to the next step in attaching your rubber cap, P8, to the other end of the rod. Next, we'll be attaching our slide score, P14, to both ends of our table using our H6 screws. You will notice that these holes are not pre-drilled, but they have been scored. So you simply just want to go ahead and take off each end of your slide score and place them right side up. And you want to make sure that the hole on each end is faced inwards towards each other. Then go ahead and slide in your crossbar and secure using your H6 screw. Next, attach your two cup holders to both ends of the foosball table. Simply just slide both of them in and they'll snap in place. Next, we'll place the two additional cup holders, P16 
to both sides of the end panel using our H5 screws. Now these holes are not pre-drilled, but they have been marked. So you just want to go ahead and line up your cup holder over each of those holes and then secure with your H5 screw. Congratulations! We are now officially done assembling our kick Royalton foosball table. You are now free to enjoy your table with your friends and family. I hope this instructional video was helpful. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please visit us at www.kickfoosballtables.com or email us at support at kickfoosballtables.com.